even if you don't want to use a lot of biodiesel, putting even 2% in there will keep that pump lubricated, it keeps the injectors lubricated, and all the benefits that you had when you had low sulfur diesel uh, that now is gone. So it's just a side benefit of it. Definitely, and with a lot of those pumps, especially those Dodge pumps and even the common rail CP3 pumps, we see about anywhere from 5 to 10 to 20 of those coming through a, a month being replaced mm -hmm. just because of running that ultra-low sulfur diesel. And the people will come to us and they'll say, well, I, didn't, I only did not run additive for about a month or a tank or two tanks or whatever it is. And usually within five to 10,000 miles even, we've seen injection pumps go down. So that's definitely a good side note. I appreciate you hitting on that. Yeah, you bet. You bet. It, it's sad, unfortunately, because the, the EPA and the feds forced ULSD on the market and in some ways, you almost wonder if it was to kill off all the old diesels that are driving out there so so they could get rid of that. Some of those old, uh, what they claim are bad for the environment diesels, but it's killing them. It's killing them pretty quick, too. Definitely, definitely. So use biodiesel. <laughs> use biodiesel. In short, use biodiesel. That's for yeah, sure. <laughs> it'll keep that old diesel running longer. <laughs> and just hitting on the, uh, the blend, that would be a B2, correct? B... Just uh -huh. running just even B2, B2 would, would bring all that lubricity back. Yep. Now, there's some that claim that you can even use automatic transmission fluid. Um, I've not done the research one way or the other, so I can't advocate it or, or just say it's bad for the thing. I used it long before I ever heard of biodiesel. Once I heard about biodiesel, that's all I, all I used to lube my old truck with. A couple things I'd like to touch on, though, with quality. If you're going to buy biodiesel and you're not going to be making it and you got your buddy down the street that's been making it and he swears he knows how to make it and blah, 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 you need to make sure that the quality is there. Just like any good hobby or any good thing, if these guys are making fuel and you're putting it in your $50,000-plus truck, you ought to make sure the quality is there. If, and unfortunately, even in the commercial industry of producing biodiesel, it suffers from quality as well. So there's something that the federal government has come out and said, it's actually by the EPA, there's an ASTM standard that biodiesel has to meet to be run and, and be certified, if you will, to be sold in the United States. Unfortunately, there's nothing to enforce that standard at this point. So there's nothing to, that keeps Jim and Joe's home brew plant down the street <laughs> from uh, from selling crappy fuel to you and I. There's no punitive damages for it. Diesel fuel there is, but not biodiesel. So if you buy biodiesel and you buy it commercially, before you buy it, I recommend that you go into the station and ask the owner or whoever's buying that, is this ASTM quality biodiesel? Do you have a certificate that, show me, that shows me that it is? There's a couple reasons for that. Obviously, we want to put good fuel in our trucks. However, the other issue comes back to warranty. Let's say that you do put diesel in your biodiesel in your truck, and for some reason something goes wrong with the fuel system, and you take it into Cummins, Dodge, uh, Dodge, Chevy, or Ford, and they say, "Well, you put biodiesel in it. You voided the warranty." And you say, "No, I didn't put it in any farther than the thing than the the um, what the owner's manual said, which isn't much, by the way." Um, if you can. If you know with a surety that the fuel you bought met the ASTM standard, then you can take that back to Dodge, Chevy, or Ford and say, no, I only bought high-quality fuel. This is your problem. Let's have you fix this. So it's real important to make sure that the fuel you add is meets good quality. Okay, great. Yeah, definitely a good point to hit on. Now, but going along with that, we also uh, sort of a side plug to check out uh, the Parley's Diesel Performance YouTube video page as well as uh, Utah Biodiesel Supply has now created a, a video tutorial page but in those videos that we created and some of those that you'll see released a little bit later uh, we actually had a chance to go to your home brewing station home base sort of and see some of the different units that you offer on your website as far as options for people to, to brew from home and as far as those standards go you had mentioned something about those units being able to hit at or, or close to at least those standards right? That's correct, yep. I, uh, <clears throat> as I got into biodiesel in 2003, I started getting real real intrigued with this quality thing. And so I, uh, I picked some units that I found could actually hit that standard. Uh, they're expensive, I'll be honest, but, you know, <laughs> isn't anything that's good in life, I guess. Yep. But, yeah, if you make fuel using these following the methods that they, that they tell you to do, you can. You can make fuel that's good enough to sell and is certified in the, in the U.S. by the EPA. I mean, it's beautiful fuel, by the way. 
Yeah, I had a chance. I was very impressed with the clarity and that it was just a beautiful, rich color, um, which hopefully will come through in the videos that we're putting together. What was the name? Just tell people, fill people in on once they get to your site, where to look for those units for home brewing. You bet. Uh, for home brewing units, you want to get to the site, and on the left-hand side under supplies, they're called the BioPro Automated Biodiesel Processors. It's the BioPro line. We sell three types right now. Um, one is called a BioPro 150 that will let you make 40, up to 40 gallons every 48 hours. That one runs 5,995. There's a BioPro 190 that's a little bit more automated that allows you to make 50 gallons of biodiesel every 48 hours, and that's uh, 8,395. And then there's a, the big boy, which is a unit that allows you to make 100 gallons every 48 hours. It's called the BioPro 380, and it runs 12,995. So they're not cheap, but boy, if you're looking for something to make biodiesel quick, automated, not a lot of time, these things are it. I, I've been really, really, it's what I personally make my own biodiesel with. Okay, great. Yeah, and like I said, we were able to see, we had a chance to, to see it, and it's clean. It's beautiful fuel. Now, along, going along with those costs, you know, people right off the bat might say, oh, 8 grand, 12 grand, whatever it is, that's mm -hmm. pricey. But we were talking about earlier, diesel's already hit over $4 a gallon in the U.S., correct? It has. I've been monitoring diesel, and I, I watch it very closely. In fact, if you'd like to go to my website, Utah Bio Diesel Supply, it's just utahbio.com. I have a link to the federal government site where they monitor fuel prices. And I'm seeing diesel at uh, 399 in Smithton, Pennsylvania. I saw it at 399 in Washington. Uh, let's take a look uh, at Spokane, Washington, 399 Ellensburg, Pasco, Spokane. Uh, so it is, it is climbing price and it is climbing quickly. We've seen this jump, at least even in Utah, we've seen almost a 30 to 50 cent jump in under two weeks. That's, that's pretty significant. And if you've got a diesel and you're feeding it diesel fuel, boy, uh, wouldn't it be nice if you could make your own fuel for under a dollar a gallon, i.e. biodiesel, and start saving money immediately. Yeah, definitely. And especially with summer coming around the, the corner, I mean, prices only go up for fuel in the summer. Summer's mm -hmm. also an optimal time, I would